Hey everyone, today we're going to be discussing New World Game Servers. Quick background on myself, I hold a degree in network engineering, and I've worked in IT for a ma major cell phone provider as an advanced repair agent. I've been a dispatch uh, PC repair agent, a major restaurant corporation as an Active Directory Domain Services Administrator, network engineer and lead admin for a major electrical company, major bank e-commerce software as a service support, a smaller e-commerce firm, uh, software as a service, DNS technician, and software and operations department head. And now I am currently an application engineer coding software for a major petrochemical company. Altogether, I've had over 12 years of experience in IT in all aspects from customer service to network and software development. I'm going to be my, doing my best here to give you technical information in an easy to understand way. And I'm hoping for this to be a one-stop shop for many of your technical questions. Let's start by discussing New World's basic infrastructure. New World is produced by Amazon Game Studios. Being owned by Amazon, they're going to be using the AWS infrastructure. AWS is short for Amazon Web Services, and it is Amazon's IT solution used by many companies for application development, and web hosting, call center VOIP operations, email hosting, and they have a very strong and complex structure to help support thousands of companies and operations. AWS is more than just data hosting. It has pre-built integration software. Every aspect of New World from the hosting of the game files to the advanced VOIP integration that gives you proximity voice chat is handled by AWS. I've worked with AWS technology in the past and it's a very flexible and powerful solution. A good way to understand network infrastructure for MMORPGs, specifically New World, is to understand that everything isn't hosted on the same server and that many features and parts of the game are pieces of the whole. Generally, you are going to have a login server that is going to act as a basic ADDS type server. ADDS means Active Directory Domain Services. What this means is it's what authenticates your account to access the game server and the data that you've saved. Once you're authenticated, your account is accessed by a directory stored in a database that holds all of the information about your character, your in-game account, and whatnot. There are many kinds of database servers. The most common type is SQL, which many people have at least heard of. But think of it kind of like an interactive, super customizable, dynamic spreadsheet. The enemies in-game, their stats, the items they drop, items found throughout the game and the stats of the items are held on a separate database and the items that are added to your account are added by transferring data between those databases. The actual game server itself is a dedicated server that runs code of the game and you interface with that via the client on your machine being that the game itself runs on your hard drive. You interact with other people and can see them live because the dedicated server is hosting you all at once and you're interacting with each other through that server. The VOIP is a separate program that Amazon uses to interact with the dedicated server and all of these pieces that we are discussing are different servers, applications, locations, and teams of players and people interacting with each other simultaneously to give you, the player, a seamless and great gaming experience. Now that we have a basic understanding of the foundation of the New World infrastructure, let's look at a few of the common questions and complaints I've frequently seen on Reddit, Steam, YouTube, Twitch, and the beta, and see if we can't get some answers. One I commonly see and one that affects me personally as I live in Texas is why there isn't a central US server and everything seems to be isolated to the east and west coast. The reason there are no central US servers is there is not a central data center for AWS in the United States. There is a central time zone server but it's located in Canada. The AWS data centers are as follows. USDs has three data centers, one in Ohio, one in Northern Virginia, and one is a GovCloud. When I say GovCloud, you can safely assume New World isn't running on those. They're usually used for international governmental agencies, DOD, things of that nature. On the west side, there are three data centers, one in Oregon, one in Northern California, and one GovCloud. Now that we understand there are no major data centers in the central US for AWS, but there are a number of edge locations. Edge locations are far more common to see, but what is an edge location? Edge locations service requests for CloudFront, a CDN. A CDN is a content delivery network, and Route 5.3, a DNS service. 
DNS meaning domain name system. Any request that goes to one of these systems gets sent and routed using an edge location that provides the end user with lower latency and less need to be physically located close to a data center. Edge locations are located in the central US but aren't hosting servers like the east and west uh, coast are. In the central US there are three edge locations, two in Texas and one in Indiana. There are a few in the mountain time zone as well in Oregon, Arizona, and Colorado. So now that we understand there aren't any central time servers is because there are no AWS data centers located there. But edge locations should help with uh, latency quite a bit. I've seen concerns and questions on Steam and Reddit of oceanic servers, regional language servers, and things of that nature. Firstly, yes, there will be oceanic servers. There's an AWS data center in Sydney, and they're building one in Melbourne that will be handling New World. As far as Asian and other AWS data centers, there are two in Japan, two in China, one in Korea, one in Hong Kong, one in India, one in Singapore. There's six AWS data centers in Europe, one in the Middle East, one in Africa, one in South America, and tons of edge locations all over the world. Their website states that they're exploring the logistics of expanding New World to other data centers to ensure everyone has a chance to play. They did announce as of August 31st, 2021, that they will not have a C server, C standing for Southeast Asia server at launch, but hopefully they will get that up and running for those folks fast. Regional language servers are a great way for people to interact with each other in their native language and give them a spot that they know that they will meet up with people from their part of the world. <clears throat> New World at launch will be playable in English, Spanish, Brazilian, Portuguese, Italian, French, German, and Polish. That being said, the, the issue of language-specific servers it's a bit of a debate and not as much of a black and white subject as one might think some people think that the community would naturally gravitate to people of a certain area all collectively picking a server and going to that and having it be the unofficial whatever language server giving players the choice to do that or not in fear of labeling that one server a german speaking server an italian speaking server that that would create dead servers if they had the hard labels on them. And other people wanting to comfortably and easily find a server filled with people speaking their native language. Having them labeled. You know, German or Italian servers. Amazon Game Studios has been a bit quiet on this subject. And I don't have a hard answer for this question. But if I had to guess from a business perspective. I would think that you would have a few language specific ones in general, but you're free to pick like a 3 to 1 ratio, 3 non-specific language servers to one specific one. One thing I do see a fair number of questions and complaints about is why there isn't a dedicated PvP server selection. And really the short answer to this is the game was built around PvP and this is more of a design related issue than a technical or server related issue. While there would be technical issues on a code level, um, you know, changing the way that PvP interacts with scaling mobs, experience, questing, quest board, stuff like that on a PvP specific server where that can't be disabled. Um, as opposed to it being able to be disabled and having the PvP, PvE and uh, crafting only options without PvP being interacting with those uh, specifically. So the short answer for why there isn't dedicated PvP servers at this time is really it's a design choice rather than a technical or server limitation. The next question comes up almost every time a new MMORPG launches. And it's often not framed as a question, but it's sometimes opening night is going to be a nightmare to play, things of that nature, and it's true. Even with AWS, there are factors that are going to interfere with your connection to the game and give you lag. The obvious issue here is that the servers themselves are going to be bogged down with hundreds of thousands of requests over and over, and it's going to be using up so much of the server's resources that it's going to slow down. That one we all pretty much know. There are other factors that could make your connection slower than other people's though. Your physical location versus the location of the server's data center. The farther you are, the more connections you're going to have to make to get to that server. In the IT world, we call those hops. 
the more hops means the longer path you have to take for your computer to talk to that server and then that server to talk to you and then rinse and repeat as the connection is established. The next is your ISP, ISP meaning Internet Service Provider, and the hardware. We will get more in depth of the hardware later, but your internet connection speeds are throttled by your service provider and your computer's ability to process that information is also a large factor. The number of people connecting to the server is obviously a big part in using up resources, but one factor people don't think about is the servers in between that you're hopping to to get to the server that you want to talk to and having congestion in the entire network path to the server could be causing you uh, to run slower than some other people who would be closer and have fewer hops to get to. Generally your machine and the machines along the way are going to cache the route which means it's going to make it a bit faster for your machine to go along that route to get to the uh, server that's actually holding the game and all of the information. So in summation, temper your expectations on the first day and night of any MMORPG launch, especially AAA titles. You're going to have lots of network connection, congestion, and other factors affecting your ability to play, and the lag is going to be present during the game at those times. One thing I haven't seen a direct question on, but I wanted to touch on really fast, is the use of a VPN, or Virtual Private Network. That helps mask your IP address from anyone trying to sniff your network traffic. Many people know what a VPN does. It helps with privacy and it helps mask your IP address so people don't know what you're searching for. But what they don't know is how it helps protect against sniffers. Sniffer is a program that captures data sent in packets of information between your machine and the machine you want to connect to. It intercepts this traffic, decodes it, and gets a tiny bit of information of what you were doing. If it gets enough of these packets, it can get your p to passwords or exactly what you were doing and the activity you're doing on the internet. So that is what a VPN and why it's a good. But if you're about to log in for a three, four hour game session to play New World, just turn off your VPN or set a whitelist option to allow newworld.exe through the VPN program. Reason being, it will slow you down. And what it does is it routes your traffic through a remote server to your host, giving you an extra data connection along with your network that is way out of the way of the path that you would normally go. So if you're using a VPN to mask your IP as a German IP address, and you live in the US, then you're pinging that server in Germany. Then that German server is handling the traffic between you and the AWS server in the US. So in theory, you would have a worse connection than someone in Germany trying to connect to the East Coast server, because you are going from the US to Germany, Germany to the AWS East, AWS East to Germany, Germany to the US. I would suggest turning off any VPNs while you game that they are used to protect privacy. Odds are you're not going to be doing anything noteworthy like paying bills with your card or logging into a bunch of stuff while you're gaming anyway. Hope this information helps you with your new world experience and gives you a better understanding on the technical side of the game as far as networking goes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Hope you all have a great time in Eternum, and I'll see you in there.